Welcome back to Velshi and Rule. This morning, White House Chief of Staff John Kelly is again facing criticism for some controversial remarks. This time, it's for comments he made about the Civil War and Confederate General Robert E. Lee. They came during an interview on Fox News last night where he was asked about the recent decision by a Virginia church to remove plaques that honored both George Washington and Robert E. Lee. History is history, um, and uh, there's certain things in history that uh, were not so good, and other things that were very, very good. I think I, I think we make a mistake, though, and, and as a society, and certainly as uh, as individuals, when we take what is today accepted as right and wrong and go back 100, 200, 300 years uh, or, or more. It shows you what, uh, how much of a, of a lack of appreciation of history and what history is. Uh, I would tell you that Robert E. Lee was an honorable man. Uh, he was a man that uh, gave up uh, gave up his country to fight for his state, which in 150 years ago was more important than country. It was always loyalty to state first back in those days. Uh, now we're, it's different today. Uh, but the, 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 the lack of an ability to compromise uh, led to the Civil War, and uh, men and women of good faith on both sides made their stand where their conscience uh, had them make their stand. History is history, but for fact's sake, let's tell the truth. First of all, historic fact number one, the Civil War was fought over slavery. Eleven southern states left the Union back in 1860 and 1861 in order protect, to protect the institution of slavery following the election of President Abraham Lincoln. Lincoln was an avowed opponent of the expansion of slavery, but said he would not interfere with it where it already existed. From History.net, the burning issue issue that led to the disruption of the Union was the debate over the future of slavery. That dispute led to secession, and secession brought about a war. The first state to secede, North Car excuse me, South Carolina, on December 20th, 1860, it approved of an ordinance of secession, and it offered an invitation to form a confederacy of slaveholding states. As for Robert E. Lee, he served in the U.S. Army and became superintendent at West Point. In April of 1861, President Lincoln offered him command of all federal forces, but Lee declined, resigned from the Army, and accepted a general's commission in the newly formed Confederate Army. All right, General Kelly's comments touched off strong reactions on social media. Among them, Beatrice King, the daughter of Martin Luther King Jr., tweeted, I'm sorry, Bernice King, uh, tweeted, it's irresponsible and dangerous, especially when white supremacists feel emboldened to make fighting to maintain slavery sound courageous. All right, joining us live now is Roland Martin, host and managing editor of TV One's News One. Uh, Roland, uh, you, uh, John Kelly said that uh, to not appreciate this shows a lack of appreciation for history. History, you have tweeted out this morning calling Kelly's comments insanely stupid. Tell me how you really feel about this. Yeah, I'm not going to allow four stars to allow Stuck on Stupid to, uh, to simply go on. Here's a man who is utterly clueless. For him to say that, well, we could have compromised. Really? We did compromise. There was a thing called the United States Constitution. And do you know what that said? If you're black, you're three-fifths of a human. What he should do is go read Lawrence Goldstone's book, uh, uh, Dark Bargain, where it details the compromises made with the South just to get the Constitution passed. Oh, you want to talk compromise? How about the hayes Tilden <laughs> compromise? which was never written down, called the Great Compromise of 1877 that ended the 12 years of Reconstruction that ushered in Jim Crow when they removed the, uh, the federal troops from the last three remaining Southern capitals. We can talk about compromise, the fact that we had a Civil Rights Act of 1866 and one in 1875, and we didn't get another one until 1957, which was rather weak. How about compromise? We had three Reconstruction Amendments, the 13th Amendment, the 14th Amendment, 15th Amendment. But you know what? America didn't care about those constitutional amendments because of that. 1877 compromise, which led to the Civil Rights Act of 64 and the Voting Rights Act of 65 and the Fair, Has Fair, Has Fair, Has Fair Housing Act of 68. And so I need John Kelly to actually go back and read a history book that my 12 year old nieces are reading right now because clearly he fell asleep in history. I don't know if he fell asleep in history, but I'll tell you, my son, who's in the sixth grade, is reading that same history Roland's nieces are. What about Kelly's claim that 150 years ago, states were more important than country, and that he gave up his country to the fight for the state. state of Virginia? Robert E. Oh, Lee, I'm talking about. Well, well, well guess what, then? I, will, then I want to see General Kelly defend anybody who's at ISIS. 
because you know what they're doing? They're giving up country for their ideology. It's the same exact thing. See, this is how we normalize white supremacy. And how, then they say, well, we don't have an appreciation of history. See, then I love this whole deal about how, well, you know, he was, um, he was an honorable man. Really? There were abolitionists during that particular period who did not believe in slavery. So don't call them men of their time. But maybe General Kelly also didn't read this, which was from Wesley Norris, one of the slaves that he had, where he said that when we ran away, he asked, why do we run away? And we said, because we are free. He ordered us to be beaten, given 50 lashes. And then when one of his overseers wouldn't do it, he said he called Dick Williams, a county constable, who was called in to give us the lashes. And and it was Lee who said, lay it on well, an injunction which he did not fail to heed. Not satisfied with simply lacerating our naked flesh, General Lee then ordered the overseer to thoroughly wash our backs with brine, which was done. You call that honorable? Ro Rola, you what call about that decent? Kelly saying that, uh, is it fair to judge what happened in that time by the norms and morals and understandings that we have today? I'm not judging it by the norms and the morals of today. I'm judging it by the norms and the morals of the abolitionists who were also white, individuals who did not believe in slavery, individuals who did not misconstrue and pimp and degrade the Bible. There were men and women who were white, who were Americans, who did not believe in slavery. I'm not going to somehow just excuse this by saying, well, you know, they were imperfect human beings. It's not going to happen. And then, of course, I was watching Fox, listening to Fox and Friends this morning. They were saying, well, do, do, we, do we negate uh, the Declaration of Independence? because Thomas Jefferson owned slaves? Well, maybe we can because he said the life and pursuit of happiness, that wasn't the case if you were slave. All men are made equal. That wasn't the case if you were slaves. We have too many people in this country who are white, who do not know history, who want to somehow glorify these Confederate leaders. And I'm telling you right now, they ain't my founding fathers, and they're not my leaders, and we need to have real history, not his story, but history. And I will say to John Kelly, shame on you, and also, so you owe Congresswoman Wilson an apology for lying. Don't you dare stand there and talk about honor and sacred and how we treat women when you lie to the American people and you're not man enough to admit it. Roland well, Martin? you don't have to be a man to tell the truth. There's plenty of women who know how to tell the truth. And it doesn't matter oh, how you feel. The Civil War was about slavery. Nope. And I mentioned it earlier in that interview last night, John Kelly lied about Paul Manafort's relationship with President Trump. And he lied about George Papandopoulos. Pa how do I say it? Papandopoulos. Papandopoulos, when he did what? So yep. you can be a four-star general. It doesn't mean you tell the truth all the time. And real quick, real quick, Laura Ingram, you need to go read a history book, too, because if you let him lie like that in front of you, you don't know what the hell you're doing. Roland Martin is the host and managing editor of uh, TV One's News One Now. Thanks, Roland. Good to see you. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.